Hi, welcome back to Crack the Cryptic. Uh, today I'm going to take a look at this puzzle that's been requested by email. Uh, if you have puzzles you'd like to see us solve on the channel, we, we, we can't do all of them, we get a lot of requests, um, but we do try and um, accommodate as far as we can. Um, and you can email us at, at crackingthecryptic at gmail.com or tweet to us at, at crypticcracking. And if we have time, um, we will try and solve your puzzles. Um, now, I don't know how hard this puzzle is, um, so we'll start off using standard technique and see whether we need to uh, adapt that as we go through. Now, you can see, as usual, three by three blocks. If I identify where a number can only go in two positions, I'll make little pencil marks like this, which is one of the nice things that the software allows us to do. Um, and we'll go through and see how we get on. As usual with a Sudoku, the first steps are the same every time. Ah, six is six, 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 and six. So this square, I pencil mark to six there for some reason, but that can only be a six. Um, fours into these two squares. Two. Ah, okay, so if we have a look at uh, row 6 of the grid, you can see that we have to still place a 5 in row 6, but we have a 5 here, a 5 here, and a 5 here, so there's actually only one square a 5 can go into, and that's this square. Let's place this 5, see if that helps at all. Um, hmm. No, uh, I'm not sure that it does actually. Um, okay, so let's go back to small pencil marks and see where we can go next. Ah, we can pencil mark twos down here because of this two here and this two here. And that means this square must be a two. We need to put a two in this block, and this two here forces it to be in that square. So Oh, not five, a two. Therefore, this is a two. Again, we have a two here, so it's pushed up into this square. This must be a two as well. Uh, okay. And now in this block, there's only one position we can place a four. We have a four here and four here. So this must be a four. Pencil marks and fours down there. This must be a four as well. So we've made an okay start. Um, and there's another, there's another um, hidden single now in uh, row four of the grid. Where again, we have to place a seven, and look, we have a seven here, a seven here, and a seven here. So this square must be a seven. It's called a um, hidden single, that, because you can only identify it by looking... You can't identify it by looking at the square. The information in the square is not enough for us to deduce that this square must be a 7. We can only deduce it by considering the whole of the row here and eliminating the 7 from various other positions in the row. So this is the sense in which it's hidden. 7s there... Fives locked into those two positions. Oh dear. Okay. Uh, six is into these two positions. Six is into these two positions. Ah, five, seven pair here, look. So that means that in row seven of the grid, we need to place the numbers one, eight, and nine still. There's a one, eight, nine triple in these three squares. Now I'm going to start to break with convention now and label that because it's the sort of thing that, you know, 
in difficult puzzles we need to identify these these hidden triples now can we use that any anyway five sevens y yes we can so let's in fact we could have done this before as well but if we have a look at column five now this four and six are interesting in fact the four six and the eight are a bit interesting but the four and the six are very interesting because that prevents a four and a six from going into either of these two squares and look we have a four and a six as well in row one of the grid so there can't be a four six here and we've just done some work that indicated this square can only be one eight or nine so this can't take a four or a six so there are actually only two positions in column five that can be four and six and that's this square and this square but we also know we need to put an eight in column six sorry column five somewhere we can't put an eight here no eights here there's only one position an eight can go and that is there and that means we get a, we improve our one eight nine to just a one nine on the edges now um, pencil mark eights down there so what am I left with I'm left with one one three and nine to play still in column five so that's a one nine as well and this is a one three or a nine uh, okay four sixes into these two squares now do with this if anything so just to say what I'm thinking about here I'm I'm trying to use that I'm thinking about the numbers four and six because that seems to be the critical thing we've managed to identify uh, by finding this this pair now down here and I'm trying to see whether I can see any restrictions on the numbers 4 and 6 in any rows and columns, so X-wing, swordfish type restrictions. Um, at the moment I'm not doing very well. Uh, so let me think about this a bit more. So there is there is an X-wing, I think. If we look at where we can place sixes in the grid, we've got the four six that we've identified in column five. But look at this row. In row eight, we can't place a six here. We can place one here. Ah, we can place one there as well, that's no use. That's not what I was hoping for. Um, ah, we could do it with the columns though, could we? Yeah, the, I think that there is, um, there might be a finned X-wing in columns. So we've got four six here, and then where can we place a six in column two? Here can't place one in either of these squares because of this six can't place one here because of this six so we end up with this arrangement now why does that matter so just to show you we've got the basic x-wing on the sixes here going round I'll do some highlighting at the end and then the fin of the x-wing here 
So when we find this sort of pattern, we have to ask ourselves two questions. Firstly, either the fin is true, in which case this would be a 6, or the x-wing is true, in which case we'd have the 6s coming round this pattern here. Now, if there are any cells that are affected by either of those restrictions on 6s, then we can eliminate a 6 from that square. Now this square is the square that I'm therefore thinking about because this square sees both this square and the x-wing. So this square cannot contain a 6. So what can it contain? It can contain a 1. It can contain a 3. It can't contain a 4, 5, 6 for the reasons we mentioned. 7. Can I eliminate an 8 from this square somehow? Uh, eight. Eight, eight. There's an eight in one of those two positions. I'm not sure that I can. Uh, one, three, or eight here. Three or eight. Why does it matter that I've been able to eliminate a six from this square? I'm going to take a look at column three and just check whether or not um, whether or not this matters for some reason. Eight. Oh yeah. Hang about. I can really. I can. If I look at this box. 8, 8 here, so there is an 8 there, so this, I can get this down to a 1 or a 3. Can I go further than that? I'm not sure. Um, right, we need to, I'm going to take a look at column 3 now. So what have we got here? Oh, I'll tell you one thing we have got. Where can we place an 8 or a 6 in column 3? Um, hardly anywhere. This square can contain a 6 or an 8. This one can't because we have a 6 and an 8. This one can't, we have a 6 and an 8. And this one can. So there is a 6 8 pair in column 3. But we know. Ah, uh, no, they have to be careful with the X-Wing. The X-Wing doesn't help eliminate a 6 from this square. In fact, I'm going to delete the X-Wing. It's going to start confusing me otherwise. So this 4-6 is valid. This 6-8 is valid. OK. So now what do we need? We need 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. One, no, 1, 3, 5, 9 in the remaining. So this square is a 1, 5, or a 9, which we already knew, and this square, oh goodness me, is a 1, 3, 5, or 9, I think. I don't think I can do better than that, can I? Um, well, I'm not sure that I can. Hmm. Well, it does seem that like this box is where we need to focus, though. Uh, is there any other square in this box? This square is quite restricted. What are the options for this square? This can be a 1, a 2, can't be a 3 or a 4, or a 5. This can't be a 6 or a 7, it can't be an 8. Cause it aren't. So this is a 1, 2 pair. But a 1, 2 pair here and a 1-3 pair here. Um, not very uh, uh, and there's all of these 6-8s all over the place. Let's try, I'm going to start penciling marking more, more um, more completely, I think. Let's just take a look across row three of the grid. So this square here can be a one or a two. 
can't be 3, 4, or 5, can be 6, can be 7, can't be 8, can't be 9. So this is 1, 2, 6, or 7. That's not great, is it? This one, this one we know is a 4 or 6. I can't remember why I've got 2 and 4. Ah, uh, that's just basic pencil marks. So this can be a, this can be a lot of things, I think. Um, I'm going to remove the basic pencil marks here just because I need to keep this pure. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so this is 1, 2, 3, or 4. And over here, this square is quite restricted. We've got 1, 8, 9 here. And this square, we've got 1, 3, 5, 6, must be a 7. I think so. Can't, can be an 8, so uh, it's not great, is it? I'm not seeing anything clever I can do with that. Okay, um, let's try row 1. Um, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is. 6 is ruled out anyway, 7 is ruled out, 7 is possible, sorry, 8, ah, that could be a 9 as well. Um, this can be almost anything I think. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, can't be a 4. Is there anything else we can do with that? This square might be better actually, 1, 3, Four, five, six, seven, or nine. And this square, one, three, seven, nine as well, I think. So there's something going on. Um, There is something, I think, going on here. There's a, there's an interaction between the one two, this one two pair, this one three pair, and this square. And the fact that we've got so many squares in row one that can only be one three seven or nine. Because, just to show you what I'm thinking here, if I can this square be a one, for example. I'm not sure it can be. Because if this square is a 1, you can see it's forcing this square to be a 2. Now this square therefore becomes a 7 or a 9. But now we've got too many we've got too many problem squares now in row 1, don't we? I'm not being very articulate here, but it feels to me like this is too cluttered. Um, let's just go through it slowly. So if if this is a one, let's just do it and show show ourselves that this is doesn't work. One, two, three would be forced. This square, therefore, has to be this one here has to be a seven or a nine. We can see that. So this would be a 7 or a 9, this would be a 3 or a 9. But these two squares also. So we've got we've got to get the numbers 3, 7 and 9 to fill four different squares. That's clearly not possible. Um, so this square can't be a 1. Now don't know if that matters, but but can, we can do the same thing. I think with three, can this square contain a three? We get the same problem. Look, look what happens if this is a three. This is going to be a one, and this is going to be a two. So again, this square gets restricted. 
Now let me just show you, uh, go along here, three, 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 like this. So you can see now, we've got to put the numbers one, seven, and nine into four different cells across row one. This square, this square, this square, and this square. That's clearly not possible. Um, so what can we say about that then? Let's just replace the numbers so that we don't make a mistake. This can't be a three either, so this is a five or a nine. Now, okay, now there is only one position for a three in column three. This must be a three. Let's eliminate the threes along here. And, all right, now, are we starting to get somewhere? Five. That's infuriating. I'm not sure it's going to give us much at all. <laughs> um, no, that, can, that square is more restricted. We have a nine here. Let me just check this one again. One, five, eight, nine. Yeah, this is a one or an eight. This is a one or an eight. Oh, well, you can you can do another type of trick here. Probably doesn't matter, but if we look at this three by three block, you can see that the nines in this three by three block either appear in column 7 or column 9. Therefore we need to be very careful about selecting options in cells elsewhere in the grid that would cause a problem up here. Now you can see because of the geometry of the grid for example here that Nine. So I'm looking at this square. Can this square ever be a nine? And the answer is no, because if this square is a nine, what if this square is a nine, this square will be a nine. And we'll have a 9 in one of these two positions, i.e. column 7 or column 9. Yeah. But if this is a 9, this is a 1, and therefore this is a 9. So we'd end up with a 9 here and a 9 here. And you can see that's not possible because there's nowhere we can put a 9 now in this top 3x3 three three block. So this is not a 9. Oh. Um, this still can be a 1, 5 or 9, I think. Now it does... Oh, that's really, really annoying. I thought that was going to be um, helpful. <laughs> uh, um, just pencil mark this in one seven one nine actually because there's seven here. One seven nine one seven nine. Ah, okay, so there, there's a Y wing now. What, so we've got the Y wing one, the bent triple as I like to call it, one nine, one five, five nine in these three cells. So when we have this arrangement, we go to the pivot cell and we ask, what are the options in this cell? If this is a 1, this is a 9, obviously. If this is a 5, this is a 9. So any square that can, can see both this wing of the Y wing and this wing of the Y wing can't contain a 9. That means I can remove that 9. Um, and this squared also couldn't have a 9 in it. So the options are 1, oh, 2, 3, 4, 5, can this be a 6? Yes, we looked at that earlier. Can't be a 7. 
can it be an eight? I think so, but it can't be a nine now. Uh, oh, well, hang on, no. I still need to put the numbers five and nine in this block. And I've got, I've got one square that can contain a five or a nine. So the only other one is that one. This must be a five or a nine. Five or a nine. So there's lots of squares now where these sort of five nines, one nines, one fives going around the grid. In fact, this square here. Okay, yeah. Well, it gets us another digit off anyway. Let's let's take a look at this square. Can this square what happens, this square could be a 9, that's one possibility, but look what happens if it's if it's a 1, this square here is a 9, that means that's a 5 up there, which means this is a 1, which means this is a 9, so either this is a 9 or this is a 9, so again we can hunt round the grid, and this square is the most obvious square, this square cannot contain a 9, so let's remove that 9, that means this is a 1 or a 7. Now, can we use that to any effect? Um, <laughs> maybe not. Um, oh, yes, we can. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. Now, let's have a look at this square. Let's ask ourselves the question, can this be a 1? Simple question. If this is a 1, the implications in this block up here is that this square here must contain a 1. Okay, so let's remember that. So we've selected 1 here and it's forced a 1 here. But if this is a 1, this square here is a 7. Now if this square here is a 7, this square here can't be a 7, and we get this 1 8 pair here. But look, this 1 8 pair points at this square and would force it to be a 2. <laughs> so when we select 1 in this square, we have a we have force a contradiction in this square. This square cannot be both 1 and 2 at the same time. Um, so this square must, in fact, not contain one it must be a nine now I am really hoping that that will be useful uh, you can see it's going to it's going to be a little bit useful let's hope it's useful enough that we can actually crack the puzzle from the off the back of it it's got to be a five or a nine now I think so we get a 1-8 pair down this column. Feels like it feels like that should have been the step that's gonna help us finish the puzzle but I'm not, not immediately seeing how to do it. Um,
infuriating. Uh, okay. So how do we make more progress at this point? What can we do that's going to help us to crack it? Well, one thing we can note is that this 9 here scans down the grid. And this 4-6 pair we found in column 5 means there's a 9 in one of those two positions. So that means that in this 3x3 three three block, the 9 is locked into one of these two positions. Um, remove the 9 here just because of the 9 being in this square. 1, 3 here. 1, 3 here. So what is this seeing that matters? Seeing this square. So I'm just wondering about a chain now where we force this square to be a 1. How do we force this square to be a one? We make this square. We make this square a nine. How do we make this square a nine? Well, we could adjust this square or this square. So let's just ask ourselves the question, can this square be a 5? If this square is a 5, this square here is a 9. Yeah? 5 here, 9 here. But if this square is a 5, if this square is a 5, this is a 9, this is a 1, this is a 3. But if this square is a 3, that means that this square here is a 3. And I still need to place a 9 in row 2 of the grid. Where can I place a 9? Only over on the left, only in fact in this square. So this square is not filled. Just to go through that again, if this square is a 5, the problem is that that makes this square a 9. So we have a 5 and a 9 in these two squares, both pointing at this square and giving us a massive problem because this... Yeah, so this can't be a 5. This must be a 1, which means this is a 9 and this is a 5. It means this is a 9. So we can remove the 9 there. And this square here becomes filled, which means this square is a 1, 7, 1. Maybe we are starting to make proper progress at long last. This is a monstrously difficult puzzle. Uh, 1, 7 here, so this has to be an 8 now. 8, 8, this must be an 8, 2. This must be a 5. This must therefore be a 9. Um, I'm trying very hard to keep concentrating and make sure I'm not missing a trick here. Uh, I feel like I've... 6, 7, 8. Okay, that looks alright. Let's go to move this one here and this one. Two, four, six and seven. This can't be a two anymore. This square here. I can't remember if I pencil mark that for a reason or not. Four, six, seven. So four or six. Ah, no, okay, I did. That, this square here must be a four, I think. I hope I couldn't have done anything with that earlier. That would be infuriating. Four, 
four like that. One three looks all right there, doesn't it? This now must be a seven. That means this is a one. Wow, this might we might be there. We now got a seven nine pair in the top here. This must be a three. That's still working. This must be a nine now. Three, okay. Uh, three, three. I need to put a three into one of those two squares. This must be a nine. no longer be a six. We're looking for one and five into these two squares, I think. Which again looks reasonable. Um, oops, five and eight into these two squares, I think. This square here has to be a two. This square here has to be a one, I think. Um, sorry if I'm just being silent now, I'm just trying to make sure that we don't mess up anything here, which I've probably just done actually, 5-5, five, five. oh no, okay, goodness heart-stopping moment there. I thought I had to put a 5 in the middle. Uh, so that's a 2. Oh, no, it's not. Ah, go away. Uh, I need to put in uh, 3 and 6. So this is 3. This is 6. This is 3. And if we've made this is a 7. 9 here looks good. Wow, that is a monstrously hard puzzle. Um, yeah, I, I'm not going to say much more than that. Um, it's 37 minutes on the clock. This is the longest video I think we've done on the channel solving a Sudoku. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry I couldn't get it done more efficiently. I'm sure I've missed things as I was going through and had some of you shouting at your screens. But that was one way to solve it logically. And uh, quite unusually for the channel, I needed to resort to some unusual chaining there. Um, so, um, yeah, there you go. Thanks for watching. We're back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.